And welcome back. Right now we're going to turn our attention to the Middle East and to talk with us about this complex situation there. We have Daniel Pipes from Middle East Forum. Hello, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Good evening. So the big news we received today from, uh, from Israel is that the U.S. considers withdrawing its support for one of the Israeli battalions, namely Natsah Yehuda Battalion. Now, what, what's, what's the reason for this? I think the reason is that President Biden has two conflicting priorities. On the one hand, he cares about Israel wants Israel to be safe and secure. On the other hand, he has an election and he has a significant part of his Democratic Party that hates Israel. So he's trying to please them both. He's trying to do both. On the one hand, the U.S. government is about to send 26 billion U.S. dollars to Israel. That's a lot of money. On the other hand, you see the president take symbolic steps, really, to, to please his constituency. So I say that let's go to Israel, arms, money, diplomatic support at the United Nations, and the small things go to the Palestinians. This doesn't really please anybody entirely, but it is President Biden's situation at the moment. I see, but what's, what's, what's this battalion about? Why, why is it supposed to be sanctioned? I think it's almost arbitrary. You know, uh, the somebody in the government said, maybe President Biden, maybe Secretary of State Blinken, maybe someone else, find some way to please our anti-Israel constituency. Find something. So they found this battalion. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's almost irrelevant, the details of the battalion. That's it's, very, it's, very it's, interesting. It's a balancing to the 26 billion. And it's, you know... Given the choice, you'd rather have $26 billion than uh, have a battalion condemned. Sure, sure. I mean, like you said, it's $26.4 billion, and then you, you sanction a battalion. That is very strange. Now, Netanyahu is obviously not very happy about it. He said it's a height of absurdity and a moral low, and that his government will act by all means against uh, these moves. What can Netanyahu do? Do. I mean, it seems like Netanyahu is not listening to Joe Biden anyway, um, but now sanctions. Well, so Biden gave him money. He sanctions one battalion. It's very confusing. And where is this leading us to? Right. right. Well, uh, the prime minister of Israel has real influence. He can go to the House of Representatives, the Senate uh, and to many others and say, stop this. This is not right. Put pressure on the president. Uh, I would suspect that both Republican leaders in the Senate and House, Mitch McConnell and Michael Johnson, would be sympathetic and would be happy to go to the White House and say, don't do this. This is a mistake. So it's, um, it's something that, that Netanyahu can, can have an impact on. I don't know if he can reverse it in this particular case, but he can make it more difficult for the president to take these symbolic steps, these symbolically nasty steps. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we all know the uh, uh, the situation in, uh, in the Gaza Strip, but how would you describe the situation in the West Bank and in East Jerusalem? Uh, Eastern Jerusalem doesn't seem to have any particular problems that I know about. Um, the West Bank is uh, tense. Uh, there has been no major outbreak, many minor outbreaks of violence. Of course, there's also violence in Israel's north uh, with Hezbollah in Lebanon. Uh, so all around there's violence. But I think it's also important to point out, when we going back to the Iran uh, topic, that the Israelis cut back their response, their attack on Iran, to please President Biden. So this was a major step uh, that the Israelis, a major concession that the Israelis gave to the president. So there's a lot of negotiating, a lot of back and forth. But on the other hand, you know, on the uh, other hand, some, would, uh, some, a, I heard that uh, these these uh, commentaries that uh, actually uh, 
Benjamin Netanyahu uh, traded the, uh, the, the response to Iran's attack for um, the invasion of, of Rafa. Yeah, so, I've heard that too. Uh, maybe, maybe he got something in response. Uh, these are not uh, details, secrets that I know about. But what I'm, the basic point I'm making is there's negotiations. And both sides have leverage. Not only the American side, but also the Israeli side. Israelis can take actions, can have influence within the, the within the United States that put pressure on the president. I mean, Israel's response to Iran was very much anticipated all over mm -hmm. the world, and we thought when Israel um, responses, you know, it will be another just massacre, not a war. Yet, um, as U.S. intelligence said, it will be limited in scope, and and really was. Where do you think this is um, this is going next? Well, both sides, the Israeli and Iranian, seem to have come to a decision not to continue this particular round. Uh, there might be another round any time, but for the moment, the Iranian-Israeli confrontation is quiet. Uh, the direct confrontation, I should say. Uh, it's worth pointing out that the Iranians have a huge uh, resource, a huge arsenal, right on Israel's border. Hezbollah has an estimated, who knows what, 120, 140,000 missiles, drones, rockets. And the Iranians did not deploy, or did not, they, who knows, maybe they tried to and Hezbollah said no. But in any case, they were not deployed. So the Iranians sent missiles and drones from Iran, which is a long way away and much more vulnerable. In the future, it could be that Israel would be attacked by these tens of thousands of rockets, missiles, and drones coming from Lebanon. So it's quiet for the moment, it, or relatively quiet for the moment, but it could get very hard very quickly. Yes, and we know that uh, attacks by uh, uh, Iranian proxies on um, U.S. military bases in the region have resumed. So uh, it's, it's definitely not the, uh, the end of the conflict. But um, talking about diplomacy, I, I'd like to ask you about today's uh, visit of uh, Iranian representatives in Pakistan. What, what are you looking for um, in there? Well, you may recall that a couple of months ago, the Iranians sent missiles into Pakistan, and the Pakistanis reciprocated and sent missiles into Iran. It ended there, but it was a startling. I called it the greatest surprise of the 21st century in the Middle East. I mean, who would have thought that would happen? So clearly they are backing off and trying to find common ground. Uh, and it may not be that easy because they have conflicting interests. Mm -hmm. Now, I would like to actually talk to you about... Um Rafa, I mean, Jordan's foreign minister has called on countries to pressure Israel to prevent ground invasion on Rafa. We know that 1.2 million people are, are in Rafa right now, innocent mm -hmm. people. And my question is, do you think, what do you think Benjamin Netanyahu will do? I mean, he supposedly the date is already set. We don't know when. But do you think he has planned to prevent these 1.2 million people from dying and just and get Hamas instead of innocent, innocent um, individuals? Well, first, we don't know that all 1.2 million are innocent, but oh, granting that most of them are, I am sure that the Israelis do not plan to have them all dead by the end of their operation. Uh, I mean, but if they're all cramped, the if they're all have. cramped over there and they're planning to attack it, do you think they have a plan to to save the the innocent and and not Hamas members? I think they are working diligently to find a way to reach the Hamas members, the Hamas operatives, and not uh, have damage to uh, civilians. Uh, it's going to be difficult, but I, uh, the Prime Minister Netanyahu has repeated again and again that he plans to do it. So I think he will be doing it. He has to do it at this point. So let's hope for as little collateral damage as uh, there can be. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, with Israel's uh, military superiority, it's achievable, it's feasible. Uh, Daniel Pipes. Let's hope so. From the Middle East Forum with our guest tonight. Thank you very much. Sir, thank you very much.